is one of those coffee drinking kind of videos. Hello booktube and welcome to the first episode of Creative Nonfiction Friday. Today we will be talking about a question frequently asked by my mother when talking about my English major. Now Lindsay, how can creative nonfiction be creative? Good question mom, here is my answer. Here's the thing though, there are no wrong answers to this question. There are actually an infinite number of ways to answer it. But for today, here are my top five answers for this question. Number one, Form. You certainly do not have to stick to standard novel structure or essay structure to tell your story. For example, Dinty W. Moore, the director of the creative writing program at Ohio University, wrote an essay called Mr. Plimpton's Revenge in which he coincidentally runs into an author over and over and over again after a very uncomfortable first encounter. For this story, Moore chose to use the form of Google Maps to tell it. Links in the description, go check it out, it's hilarious. And here's another example. Remember Amy Cross Rosenthal from The Beckoning of Lovely? She wrote a memoir in the form of an encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life. These types of essays that take on a different skin are called hermit crab essays and they are my absolute favorite. There will definitely be more videos on the hermit crab essay in the future, so stay tuned for those. Number two, honest evidence. Now, what if you'd like to write a scene from a long, long time ago and you can't remember exactly what you wore or what your friend said or where you even were? If you can't remember all of the details from that scene, does that mean that you shouldn't write about it? Absolutely. Absolutely not. Go for it. After collecting as many factual details as you can, try to imagine the scene as honestly as possible. And make sure your reader knows that you're guessing rather than relying on factual evidence by using phrases like maybe, perhaps, could have, etc. In her chapbook Close Quarters, for example, Amy Monticello writes several scenes from the perspective of her parents before she was even born. Now obviously she wasn't present for any of these events, but she uses phrases like maybe, perhaps, would have to let the reader know that this is honestly how she imagines these scenes might have taken place. Number three, writing style. You choose how you want your story to be told, and obviously this goes for any genre ever invented. If you don't want to tell your story in order, scene by scene, exactly how it happened, then toss chronology over your shoulder. Arrange the scenes in a way that makes sense to you and in a way that feels right to you. If you're writing a book but don't like writing long chapters, write a page long chapter. Write a paragraph long chapter. Write a sentence. White space is powerful and it's often overlooked. By the way, this book is Safekeeping by Abigail Thomas. The entire piece is a series of vignettes, very short, and each scene is connected not by a timeline but by association. By the way, she wants each scene to connect to each other. Abigail Thomas Thomas is also my favorite creative nonfiction author and I could not recommend her books enough and I will definitely be talking more about her writing in the future. Number four is medium. This is one of the things that makes creative nonfiction one of the coolest genres ever. You can use any medium you want to tell your story. You don't have to stick to the page. You don't even have to stick to prose. In my creative nonfiction classes, we are given so much creative freedom with our final projects. And here's a very brief list of what my classmates have done for their final projects. Food blogs, book art, and found poetry, a scavenger hunt, a video essay, and a comic book, a voice recording, a skit with props and characters, a painting on paper, and a painting on a person's spine, a leather jacket with the poem sewn on the inside, a collection of postcards, and a hat full of paper cranes with sentences written on the inside. And number five, not last and not least, genre mixing. Here's what I mean by this. If you want, you can recall a scene from your life and put your own little fairy tale spin onto it. If you want, you can recall the scene as if you and your friends are superheroes and your enemy is a supervillain. Or maybe you're the supervillains and the other person is actually the superhero. If you want, you can even turn your best friend into a raven or a teapot or a fairy godmother to illustrate a metaphor. Bottom line is that you can add any genre you want to nonfiction. Let me know in the comments how you think creative nonfiction can be creative. There are no wrong answers, only creativity and inspiration. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you next Friday. Next Friday, we will be delving into the video essay along with all of my recommendations for video essays, and trust me, you will not want to miss this one. I assume you all like to watch videos.